This is showing how to make a turtle. Here's some fishes I've done before. These are modelled on the colacanth, a very ancient fish recently discovered to be still living. That's a submarine, wrecked submarine on the bottom of the sea in the shape of a fish, which I'm quite happy with. Now these lumps, the unbaked clay is what we're going to be talking about. That's a solid piece in a hump shape and this is a hollow piece with a hump. Now you do circles for little round balls for each foot, for the head and neck and for the tail. I like a larger piece for the head and neck because of course it's going to be larger. That's just demonstrating that you could use that solid piece as a former. Right, making the feet. We just flatten them out and give them a little bend to angle them downwards. And do that for all the feet. Now you can actually see it. And do it for tail. That's the second flipper for the back. I do have a reference image of a green turtle on my computer while I'm doing this. And you do each foot the same. They're sort of blades that go in the water, the flippers. So you make them in a kind of slightly curved blade shape. That's the tail. Pops in there. It's now the front flippers are larger than the back flippers so I may swap them over if the bottom ones look larger or I may just uh, yes I'm swapping them over I thought I was the other way to do it of course is to make sure you've got more clay there's that one finished now and his head and I'm doing the same now to the little one I, I very often do a large one and a slightly smaller one I don't know why it, uh, I seem to sort of automatically do it without thinking about it. I'm not specifically doing a mother and baby, but it, that's the way it turns out. Here I'm making the head. I've uh, slit into the clay with that to make a mouth. And now I'm doing two little eyes. They're too big. Cut that one in half again. And then got two eyeballs. You put the eyeballs on first into the little hollows I've already made when I was shaping the head. And then you put, uh, now I've smoothed the head on into shape, but that remaining piece of clay I'm going to turn into four eyelids, top and bottom from both sides. Now I'm just putting the flippers and the tail onto the hollowed out piece. Just showing you how I modelled the beak. Sort of pull the front portion forward to create the beak. Two front paws, sorry, um, flippers, and there you go. And then again make eyes and then you can sit there putting um, bits of wrinkles in him and marking out different patterns on him. But what I like to do is I've got a very small um, not cutter exactly, but you can use it as a cutter. I use it as a tool to make patterns in here. I haven't got it here at the moment because I haven't got that stage, but I'll show you when I get it. And it's a, a little oval shape. In other words, it's a tube that's been pinched at one end. I got one I made myself and I got one I bought, which was, I think, a bit bigger. So I've got a couple to use. And they're just made from metal tubing. Now you've got a bit of metal tubing. Like that. I bought this from a railway model shop. And you just pinch the end at one side, like that. So you just hammer like that. But I cut it off first, so I'll show you those when I come to do that part. And you can use that to make patterns on the flippers and around the shell if you like. The last one I did, I did a little I did got a little piece of clay like that 
put it into a ball and then rolled it out as thin as I could manage to a little thin snake. Like that. Right? And then simply coil it up in a position on the shell. Now that can give you a nice pattern. That's sort of what I did with the last one I made, which I haven't actually painted yet. Wonder where I put it. <laughs> well, amazingly, I actually managed to find everything I was looking for in a very short period of time. It doesn't usually happen like that. So, here are the little metal tubes I was talking about. And I have them in all sorts of sizes. So I can use them to create round patterns, or oval patterns, like that. And that. And that. Oops, wrong way around. That's just a bit I sawed off. <laughs> Not been made neat. This is the better one, the copper. I like the copper. They make better, smaller marks. So I usually use that and that one. And this teensy weensy little one, you'd be surprised. It does actually work to use all those three. See? So. And the turtle I've just made, this one, you can see how he's got all this expression with his uh, mouth open, little nostrils, and I used the whirly snakes to make the patterns on his shell and put some wrinkles on him. And he's already, the only thing I stupidly didn't do was to drill him for hanging. So I'm going to have to drill through his neck and hope for the best on that one. Best if you can remember to do that before you flip him finish. Right, this one, he's actually been painted as well with, yeah, it's painted with, um, I think it was iron or brass, one of the metal swelligant paints, and then patinaed over the top. Uh, this one, I really like this one, this small one. Oh, this one's pierced. I've pierced this one with two holes, one there and one there, so you can hang it by two pieces. This one is similarly drilled, but he's got the patterns made by this, by these. You can see the ovals. And this one, I just showed you, that's actually made with um, making sort of plates and using a ball tool, a little tiny ball tool to make or you could do it with something like that to make uh, little holes for decoration. And his mouth is closed. Well, I could drill through there. That would probably make his bottom jaw fall off, knowing me. The one that I'm most happy about is this one. This one is really nice. I like him a lot. He's got a lovely grumpy expression on his face. And I actually managed to drill through. So he's... A, got a better expression, and B, actually strung with uh, his own little hangy thing. I've worn him a few times. He was done in brass, and then you can see the ovals better on this one, and then covered with uh, patina. I think he used Tiffany blue-green and some of the dioxides as well. I might have used the um, green gold as well, patina. But uh, definitely the uh, Caribbean and indigo um, dioxides. And he's been admired a few times when I've been out wearing him, so that's nice. Makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? He is going to have to be coloured yet. I'm not sure what I'll colour him with. I was thinking of doing one of them in naturalistic colours, but I'm not really convinced of my ability to do that. <laughs> I'd have to um, do the plates in the way that uh, nature does them as well. So you have proper plates marked and then colour those. You see I've got a reference image of a green sea turtle right in front of me on my computer screen. And that is quite nicely 
um, patterned. He's got um, sort of, I could do this underneath because he's got these, in fact it'd be better doing this one than doing that one because he's hollow. So you wouldn't see the underneath, but to him you would. So that would be better. Anyway, that's how you do it, basically. So, there you go. Right, we're going to paint this one in silver. Because I haven't done him in silver before. I haven't done any turtle in silver before. I haven't done him at all. What am I talking about? Anyway, here we go. This is Swilligant Silver Metal Paint. Lovely. Don't know what I'm going to do about the patina. I mean, with silver, most things just, most patinas just make them go dark. Because that's what silver does. But I could try a little bit of the skyward pattern, see what happens. And if it doesn't work, you can always add the dioxides to produce colour, even on silver. So that would be nice. This is a plain flipper. I haven't put any patterning on it. I'm not sure how that's going to look. I usually do put patterning on. You know, like little scales or dots or something. But after all, these are pendants and meant to be pretty rather than naturalistic. There is a one I've just recently created, the one that you've been looking at, which hasn't actually been baked yet, so I could do whatever I like. Oh, you can't see a dang thing. What am I doing? Here I am, painting the turtle. Mm, shh, dumb klutz that I am. Got it all over me, as usual. There we are. This is his underneath. I'm just painting underneath his jaw. There we are. I'll speed this up anyway, so you won't hear me. What's the point? Well, I keep taking the dang thing out of shot even when I don't mean to. I do it all the time. It's so easy. It's because the angle of the camera isn't directly overhead. It's over there in front of me. Angled. That's because it's on a tripod. Now, if I was clever like some other people are or had beams in the ceiling like some other people do, I could attach it to that and it would be directly overhead. But it isn't, so I haven't. So, here's his unders, and there's his top surface. Now I'm just going to leave him like that. This is the last coat of silver paint going on the turtle. Now you need to put the patina onto wet metal paint. You can't put it on dry. Well you can but it will take sort of years to develop a long time. This means that it starts to develop almost immediately. Especially if you're using darkening, which I am. And I'm using sky blue patina which seems to have colour before you even put it on. Nice colour too. You have to make sure you get that. That's the hard part, you know, putting the colour on and making sure when it's the last um, layer that you have actually put the paint on all the areas. I can't tell sometimes whether I've put it on or haven't. This is the sky blue patina. Which is quite nice. I'm putting it on all the swirls and on his neck and his eyes around his head. A little bit on his flippers. Not on his body though. I'll probably put some, I will be putting some dye on as well because I want it stronger than that. Anyway, darkening is now going on the shell and on parts of his flippers to sort of bring it together. Well, definitely to darken his shell. 
I like the effect of uh, darkening on silver. I've tried it on copper, I'm not so happy about that. It's not quite good. Lovely. Well done.